Hello class. Well, it seems to me that based on the assessments that I've done so far, that some of you are struggling with the concept of the photoelectric effect, and some of you are struggling with the mathematics associated with uh, solving problems um, that relate to the photoelectric effect. So what I'm going to do over the next two lectures is to try and summarize this for you so that uh, we can focus on the things that you need to know about the photoelectric effect and how it happens. Um, and then um, we can apply some questions to it, answer some questions, and you can apply some of this knowledge in the laboratory uh, sessions that are coming up uh, to do with this. So let's begin by summarizing what we know about the wave properties of photons and light. As you recall, this here is the electromagnetic spectrum. So waves start off having very, very large wavelengths and they decrease further and further as the energy increases. For instance, over here we have radio, microwave, infrared, visible light, which is the only portion of this electromagnetic spectrum that we humans can actually see and discerns the color. Then we have uh, ultraviolet, we have x-rays and gamma rays. And here in the visible light, that is between uh, 450 uh, nanometers and 700 uh, nanometers. That's the wavelength. As you know, the wavelength is the distance from one peak of a wave to the next peak of a wave. Let's have a look at the wave equation. First of all, we have frequency being equal to one over T T being the period. So frequency, if you like, is how many times per second a cycle happens. And T is the amount of time it takes for one cycle. Frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. And therefore you can reconstruct that formula to make the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Let's have a look at how this applies in terms of light or photons as packets of energy. So if we look at, at a photon as a packet of energy, we can describe that energy in terms of Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. So let's have a look at these variables. We've got E is energy in joules. We've got H, Planck's constant, 6.63 .6 by 10 to the minus 34 joules second. And then we also have the wave frequency, which is in hertz. And of course, the wavelength, which is in meters. They come together. As these come together, we can draw these together in a particular formula, which we can derive from both this and this, so that we get energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. All right, so let's have a look at this side. That is the light as packets of energy all right if you like the particle side of light remember light works as a duality behaves like a particle and behaves like waves as well as you can see because it behaves like a particle it therefore has momentum now if we look across here at classical momentum momentum is equal to mass times velocity and if we consider that, we can see that where velocity is at the speed of light. But we'll come to that in a minute. So look at momentum over here. Momentum is equal to, in terms of photons, is equal to the energy over the speed of light. Momentum is also equal to, you can derive that, that energy, because you've got energy being HF, you can derive that, that uh, momentum is also equal to hc over lambda c which is Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength times the speed of light well we can cancel out the speed of light so that we end up with momentum being Planck's constant over the wavelength quite simply we can derive that energy is equal to Planck's constant by the speed of light over wavelength because as you can see if you uh, if you apply this formula and these two formulas together you can end up with this particular one now you know that power power is equal to the energy over amount of time so in other words e over delta t now because we know what that power is 
for instance, the power that it takes um, that we require for a satellite ranging laser. We can determine how many photons per second we're, like, we're likely to get or likely to need to be able to effectively make a proper uh, satellite ranging laser. So the number of photons is going to be the power, okay, the power in watts times delta T, so the amount of time that we're allowed to run divided by the energy. And as you can see over here, so the number of photons is uh, wavelength delta T times power over HC. All right, let's tie this all together. We know that E is equal to PC. We got that from over here. E is equal to PC. And in classical, um, in classical motion, replacing V with C, we can bring those together so that E is equal to PC, substitute both of these equations in it, and we end up with E equals MC squared, which, of course, you know is Einstein's famous equation uh, equating energy with mass. Okay, what I'll do now is I will put a, a few questions on the board for you to answer, and let's see how well you do. And, of course... Um, I expect you to ask questions if you need to. As I promised you, here are some questions that you can do. So this is good practice for your exam. What I suggest you do is pause the video from time to time, copy down these questions first, and then answer them. So let's go through them. A blue satellite ranging laser emits uh, photons at 6.67 by 10 to the 14 hertz. And we're going to use uh, the speed of light as 2.9979 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we will apply Planck's constant as 6.63 by 10 to the minus uh, 34 joule second. So effectively, when we combine these two, we will be looking for significant figures of at least three. Question number one. Calculate the energy associated with a quantum of this light. Question number two, calculate the momentum associated with a quantum of blue light. And we're talking about this light here, so frequency of 6.67 by 10 to the 14 hertz. Over here in question three, I need you to calculate the momentum of a quantum of red light. This time, 650 nanometers. Question four, Calculate the energy of each photon emitted by a green laser at 515 nanometers. And then for the same green laser, calculate the number of photons emitted by a 60 watt green laser that's uh, emitting photons at 515 nanometers. So I need you to apply the formulas that I have given you already and see if you can come up with the answers to these questions. Okay, let's have a look at the solutions to these uh, five introductory questions that I gave you. First of all, a blue satellite uh, ranging laser emits uh, photons at 6.67 by 10 to the 14 hertz. We're going to use a uh, speed of light at 2.9979 uh, by 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we're going to use Planck's constant at 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 joules. So let's have a look at uh, question one. Calculate the energy associated with a quantum of this light. Well, energy is Planck's constant times the frequency. So it's pretty simple. Uh, energy 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 joule second times 6.67 by 10 to the 14 hertz. And if you do that calculation, you'll find it comes out to, in three significant figures, comes out to 4.42 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's keep that figure because we're going to need it. Because question two says calculate the momentum associated with a quantum of blue light. That's this light up here. 6.67 by 10 to the 14 hertz. So momentum is uh, Planck's constant times the frequency over the speed of light. 
which is the energy, so P equals HF, HF uh, over C, so it's the energy over C. Now we've already calculated the energy. If you have a look back up here, 4.42 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we just plug that in, 4.42 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Um, joules over uh, 2.9979 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Therefore, the momentum of a quantum of blue light is 1.47 by 10 to the minus 27 newton seconds. Let's have a look at questions 3 and 4. Question 3. Calculate the momentum of a quantum of red light at 650 nanometers. So having a wavelength of 650 nanometers. Let's have a look at the formula. Frequency is the speed of light over the wavelength. We have both of these. And energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. And again, because we now have the frequency, we also have Planck's constant, we can derive the energy. So the energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. All right, so that's the first part. The second part is, it's asking us to calculate the momentum. So the momentum is equal to the uh, energy divided by the speed of light. From that we can derive that the momentum is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength times the speed of light and we can cancel out the speed of light. That gives us a final formula where momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. So if we have a look at that, we can see that, that the uh, momentum therefore is 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 joules second divided by 6.5 by 10 to the minus 7 meters and uh, this you can see 650 by 10 to the minus 19 meters is the uh, is the wavelength um, so I've converted that to scientific notation over here so um, momentum is equal to 1.02 by 10 to the minus 27 newton second Looking at uh, question four, calculate the energy of each photon emitted by a green laser at 515 nanometers. The energy of the photon is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. So this is quite simple. 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 joule second times 2.9979 by 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 5.15 by 10 to the minus 7 meters. Again, changing the 515 uh, nanometers into uh, scientific notation. All right, so as a result of that, we get the energy of a photon at 515 nanometers to be 3.86 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Question five, calculate the number of photons emitted by a 60 watt green laser that's emitting photons at 515 nanometers. Right, so the power in watts is equal to the energy emitted over the change in time. Energy is hc over lambda, the wavelength, divided by, so that's energy, divided by time, the change in time. So E over delta T for one photon. The power of N photons in watts is equal to N, the number of photons, multiplied by the energy of one photon divided by delta T. So here we have N, rearrange this formula so that uh, N is the subject and we have N photons, number of photons is equal to the power times delta T divided by the energy of one photon. This is where delta T is equal to one second. So let's have a look at what we have. 
substitute the figures into the formula and we have the number of photons is equal to 60.00 watts times one second divided by 3.86 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Where did we get the 3.86 by 10 to the minus 19 joules? That was in the last question. In question four. In question four, energy is equal to hc over lambda. That's Planck's constant by the speed of light over lambda. So 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 times 2.9979 by 10 to the 8 over 5.15 by 10 to the minus 7, which was the wavelength. And for that, we get 3.86 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is what we have over here. Okay, just follow that there. Now, calculate this. And we get the number of photons is 1.55 by 10 to the 20 photons per second. Okay, so that answers all five of those questions. Now, that is just an introduction. Naturally, it gets much, much harder. So I need you to get your head around what we've said so far so that we can move further uh, into the photoelectric effect and the things that we can use them for and predict. See you next time.